good morning and good afternoon all uh, it's my pleasure to be with you all in this afternoon in india i was so excited to listen to colleagues from different parts of the globe one common thing which um, inspires me is wherever we are in the corner of different parts of the world our concern towards suffering patients doesn't change that is how what i could listen to the presentations earlier I was so inspired and i'm glad to be part of this team in the next 15 to 20 minutes i'll be sharing our experiences from khpt regarding the patient centered care what we experienced in our tv programs and i at this time i want to sincerely thank usaid and ntep government partner in this state ntep and uh, central level national tv elimination program official supported us in this quickly i will take you through a few slides introducing who we are khpt's dna is around vulnerable communities we always remember um one famous quote from a scholar from southern part of india if we can see a smile in a poor person's face that is equal to seeing god khpt's dna is alleviate suffering keeping vulnerable population in the center of our heart and in our action program hallmarks of khpt they are three in all our projects we apply scientific knowledge for program design and for implementation and we always place the community at the center whatever projects we implement in the field and we strongly believe in forging strong partnership with government at all levels we don't uh, believe in running a parallel projects or parallel programs we always collaborate with government wherever we work with whether it is in a district level sub district level state level or national level we always forge a strong partnership with government at all levels in khpt if i want to share the journey we started our journey reaching the vulnerable population in terms of hiv epidemic in 2003 we moved from hiv over a period of 10 years we demonstrated with the support of various like minded partners and a strong collaboration with government we could uh, share nationally scalable models for vulnerable population in the country by 2009 we moved beyond hiv we started addressing determinants of health for the marginalized communities in mnch tb and comprehensive primary health care the focus areas of our organization there are five thematic areas as an organization we focus mnch hiv tb comprehensive primary health care and adolescent health and we cater through these five thematic areas around nine vulnerable communities in whatever project we do in our states as well as in the country these thematic areas have thematic charters our action plan which align with national priorities that is how we construct the thematic areas in the organization and i'm glad to be with you to share what we have experienced what we learned as a best practices in um, tv so far khpt's tv work started if i could uh, correctly point out we started our engagement um, with the private sector way around uh, 2010 and 11 we partnered with app associates for uh, private sector engagement project which was funded by usa in two tier cities of northern part of karnataka we learned a lot how a preferred healthcare provider can make a change in treatment towards 
urban slum dwellers. And we also started working among uh, private sector preferred providers in urban slums in another USAID funded project called TAVI, Tuberculosis Health and Learning Initiative. We learned a lot. I will share that they are the foundation principles for uh, what I am going to present it today. We moved from private sector engagement into community engagement, patient-centric approaches in, uh, in the last four years from 2016 onwards in urban slums of three states. In urban slums, patient-centric approaches and community engagement, we could learn by practicing three best Hello. practices in three states, covering 24 districts and 159 TOs, covering a general population of 26.8 million and urban slum population of 8 million. The best practices, what we learned in reaching urban slum population for a TB care, a personalized care, patient-centered and family-supported care, which we are taking a new uh, scale to different states, which I will come a little later. First of all, I'll share these experiences, what we learned in urban slums. First foundation principle or foundation best practices, what we learned in a Thali project, a USAID funded project is involving community, making, enabling community to drive the TB agenda was one of the crucial foundation, what we learned. The rationale behind involving community structures in TB, we leveraged it from our experience, how we worked with vulnerable communities when we supported them during HIV epidemic. Same principle we applied because we learned that engaging with community structures will promote positive messaging around TB in the community. It will also mobilize support for TB patients and families. When a community put together, start responding to TB as a health issue, it will eventually address stigma and discrimination. It will address diversities within vulnerable communities. Communities own up and build awareness within the community on TV as well as health. Not only that, community structures engagement increase the demand for TV services in our areas. It is not only our rationale worked well, we could uh, systematically step-by-step step, engage with community structures when we engaged with community structures in uh, urban slums in three states of our southern India. First up is in the communities, we mapped DMCs, selected community structures using a checklist, identify leaders in the community structures, and these community leaders were provided a perspective building. Not only that, every month, these community structures, they were handheld with our project staff. This step-by-step -step process of engaging community structures yielded results. Community structures in urban slums, it could be either a self-help group or a welfare association or a youth club or a fan club, but the established community structures, when they own up TB as an issue, health as an issue, we could see a sustainable response to TB from community. It is not only driven by government. On one hand, service provision is driven by government. On the other hand, from the field, demand side increased and it was sustainable because of a community-led response. The key learnings are existing community structures, even now in urban slums, they are untapped resource. When we work with these vulnerable communities in community structures, whether they are formal, unorganized, or informal, it helps in gaps in service reach. Not only in TB, beyond TB, 
community structure engagement uh, will reach to a broader health agenda. Not only that, involving self-help groups brought focus on gender in the TB context. The last and important uh, learning is it is cost effective and it is sustainable. For example, whole of government machinery is used when we do active case finding once in three months or once in six months in the respective states. The whole machinery is involved. But when we involve community structures, it is not dependent on any frequency. This is a sustainable response to TB. Community structures in our experience, they referred symptomatic patients from their own peers, from their own community, and they were tested. There are excellent publications which we presented during a union conference. What is the role of community health worker in uh, treatment outcomes and in case referral, which I can share with the larger forum a little later. But this experience and learning, engaging with community structures, gave us a significant thrust in the upcoming projects. Second element on patient-centric approaches, having a patient support groups. We all know Patients, when they come as a support group, they will have a journey with hope when it comes to cancer, when it comes to diabetes, various kinds of patients, when they come towards, when they come join as a group, there will be a sharing and learning. All their myths and misconceptions are removed. Same principle which we used for TB2. The rationale is when uh, patients come together along with the caregivers, they share the treatment experiences. And when they come together, platforms are created for an informal interaction with the healthcare provider. And this peer support build confidence one to another and patient support groups helped in overcoming stigma. In our uh, urban slum intervention, in three states and um, we could see a step-by-step -step again process for establishing patient support groups. Each patient support group was conducted for a 40 to 50 minute and patients were well informed ahead that every second Tuesday or every third Wednesday patient support group meetings would be held. And not only a monotonous discussion on uh, health issues, interesting topics which would help the patient and caregivers how to prepare a nutritious diet when a family member is suffering from TB. What happened is during this interaction, healthcare provider, it could be a medical officer in the DMC, it could be the senior treatment supervisor, they could also get to know there's doubts what patients have, the doubts what family members have, the platform, the patient support group platform, help them to clarify their doubts, misconceptions, so that patient and family members support each other in completing the treatment course. In this process, when patients come together, when they interact together, we could identify, articulate, motivated patients who can in turn train as TB champions who advocated for the cause of TB in their own community. Patient support group helped in completing treatment and it improved treatment outcomes also. Um, our team in KHPT have done mixed methods, quantitative, qualitative methods of understanding how community structure engagement, how patient support group improved treatement outcomes well, there is, there is a lot to share with the team. I can share those findings. If at all any questions in this, uh, we have our research team also to answer. But I want to highlight these areas programmatically, how patient-centered approach is, is needed. Third element, a foundation principle, which helped um, in the urban slum intervention was personalized care for priority patients. 
um, we could listen to um, differentiated care model from HIV. In our experience, we learned TB also requires a differentiated care model. On one hand, the staff in the health system, they are stretched for various reasons, but spending time with the patient is crucial for treatment completion. If we can prioritize on one hand, from the program side, we also achieve, we have a small number of patients with whom we can interact a lot of time, clarify them, support them in treatment completion. At the same time, we can tailor make a care and support outreach for these priority patients that we learned in our urban slum intervention. First step in differentiated care model was understanding the risk and needs when we wanted to initiate the patient on treatment. We collaborated with uh, DMC staff when a patient is about to get initiated on TB treatment with a simple tool called RANA, Risk and Needs Assessment Tool, patient's needs and risks were assessed. Next step was, after assessing the risk and needs, needs of the family also was assessed. For example, to get a direct beneficiary transfer. If they have a social entitlement benefit, if, whether they have a other card, whether they have a ration card or a bank account, those needs are also assessed during the initiation of treatment, which helped for the frontline worker to tailor make their outreach visits. Based on the RANA assessment, a prioritized structured outreach plan will be, it was designed for every patient based on the DCM category. In our learning, we had seven categories of patients. For example, patients who are living alone, patients who are more than 60 years of age, patients who have comorbidities like diabetes and HIV, DRTB patients, they require a structured outreach, not a routine, give medicine, take medicine and go. Take diet, you follow this, not instead of instructions, but these group of patients require a structured approach, spending time with the patient, spending time with the caregiver, which promoted treatment outcomes because of it improved their adherence. Based on the outreach plan, house visits were made by frontline worker and counseling was a crucial part of the DC. And in fact, we developed a counseling training module and the remainder cards for frontline staff. And during every visit, the needs and risks of the patients are assessed and the evolving risks and needs were addressed through counseling and the linkages were provided. For example, if a patient is an alcoholic, Alcoholic patient, not only the patient is counseled, the family member gets counseled. Linkages to de-addiction treatment, that was done. Always there is an issue when a patient is getting all, is addicted to alcohol and also on TB treatment, uh, we get frustrated when a patient is not able to adhere to medication. No point in shouting at the patient or no point in a family member shouting at the patient, but if we patiently address the need of the patient, support him and refer him appropriately, that will affect in uh, treatment completion. One example, what we had in an urban slum in, near Bangalore is a person, um, I, I don't want to name him, but he was supported by his uh, only daughter, wife is no more. He used to sit on the roadside. He was diagnosed with the DSTB he is a regular consumer of alcohol day and night. But one thing, uh, the counseling and the support given by the frontline staff helped him to understand, but um, the daughter supported. She said, I will support my father. I cannot be with him throughout, but I can give him food and I can give him medicine. That helped the patient to complete the treatment. He used to say, morning I will take medicine, but night I take alcohol. Uh, he completed the treatment. He, his follow-up sputum samples were negative and he could complete the treatment. And the aim during TB treatment is it is not abstaining from alcohol, but make sure that the patient adheres to treatment. 
So um, having worked in the mental health field for uh, almost 20 years, de-addiction has its own complex results. We cannot expect de-addiction or abstaining from alcohol can happen overnight. But our aim in supporting patient in taking medicines, despite various complexities like alcoholism, comorbidities like diabetes, when they are coexisting. Based on these experiences, um, the, um, what we saw is the treatment outcomes also improved. When we had this patient-centric approach of patient support groups, differentiated care model, community structure engagement, it helped together to mitigate stigma and discrimination also in the community. Based on our experience, we developed a community engagement toolkit. We developed a patient support group training module where a step-by-step -step process can be used by program staff, TB program staff across various states to establish patient support groups. TB champions training module helped the empowered TB patients to serve as an advocate for TB cause. And DCM toolkit, how a frontline worker can structure a personalized care, outreach care for each patient who requires more focused attention or personalized care. These are the snapshots of a counseling reminder skill cards and uh, small uh, cards when they see a patient elderly patient, 60 years of age, what small, small um, guidelines they should have. Identify one caregiver, refer them, you find out whether they have sufficient food, who will take care of the food. Those are the protocol standard operating procedures which we built as a training module for the frontline staff also. Based on our experience from urban slum intervention, currently what we are doing is we are working uh, again with a USAID funded project, Breaking the Barriers project, in which we have a socio-ecological approach for TB elimination in four states, 15 districts covering uh, five to six million vulnerable population. And if you see in the map, we are working in four states, Karnataka, Telangana, Bihar and Assam, focusing on developing innovative models, behavioral change models, reaching urban vulnerable group. In Metro, there is a Metro model. For tribal population, a tribal model. For mining and industrial group, mining model. Migrants in Bihar, a migrant model, which are founded on these three principles or best practices like DCM, patient support group and community structures, layered with behavior change solutions exclusively for these vulnerable groups aiming at uh, improving case notification and improving successful treatment outcomes. This we have started last year. Innovative models, um, we are hoping, this is the socio-ecological approach which we'll be using in this project. What I can share right now is a foundation best practices yielding results. In two states in the last six months, despite COVID challenges, we could engage with uh, 2,954 community structures in just two states. And we could uh, train the leaders, 794 leaders, community structure leaders were trained. Um, when uh, I was mentioning about the community-led response for TBS, these community structure members and leaders, they verbally screened the 10,857 patients and referred 1,644 Patients were referred for testing. In India, we do UDST, universal drug sensitivity testing. So detection of DRTB, if they are referred to some resistance, or they are also easily picked up. Uh, the figure is the positivity rate is 9%. It is more or less similar to an active case finding um, percentage. Active case finding when the whole of government machinery is involved, active case finding uh, is about 9% of case yield is there. Regarding care and support uh, group meetings, already 2,080 patients have benefited because of this sharing and learning and making the journey easier towards the home. So these are the learnings which I wanted to share with the team. Um, happy to answer any questions. Uh, KHPT colleagues are here. They are participating in this symposium.
Thank you, Karikaran. Thank you, Chris. Hello. Yeah. Uh, doctor, can you hear me? Hello, this is Santosh from uh, Mumbai, from uh, uh, Doctors Without Border, MSF Doctors Without Border. Yeah, yeah, yeah. please, please. Uh, I have one question, like I wanted to understand uh, in your patient support group, uh, how you address uh, confidentiality of the patient, because if the patients, uh, there are many patients from the same community. Uh, yeah. Uh, excellent. We were hesitating when we wanted to form the patient support groups, this stuck in our mind, how, how it will happen. But when they come to collect medicines in the DMC, they come, they meet the STS. And this was given, an opportunity was created and it was optional. Okay. Patients and caregivers, they voluntarily joined as a group. They started sharing. It was not a forced endeavor. When they come for collecting medication, they started uh, convening as a group they started discussing and the presence of a medical person gave a good impetus when the group is formed, started sharing their doubts. And on the other hand, sitting in the other side of the table, medical personnel also started understanding it is not enough just to give, uh, give medicine and take medicine and leave. A lot of questions they started responding. Uh, so many, so many myths and misconceptions were, were clear. That is how it started. It's, uh, it was, uh, hope, hope I answered your question, uh, Dr. Santosh. Uh, 